Hi, welcome. I'm Devin Dean, Content Director at ProjectManager.com. In today's whiteboard session, I'm going to teach you how to find slack or float in your project schedule. We're going to use the activity on the node diagramming technique to do that. In the activity on the node technique, each of these activities are designated on the node. And each of the nodes is broken down into various sectors. So as the node, we of course list the activity in the middle as such, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. The six remaining sectors we fill in in doing a forward pass through the network and then a backward pass through the network to determine the float. Let me explain these different areas. In the top left part of the node, we've got the early start of that particular activity. That's the earliest time that activity could start going through the project in a forward pass. Then we've got our expected time for that particular task and we list the early finish. The early finish is simply the early start plus the time expected and you can calculate the earliest finish. Let's do a node together, starting with A. In activity A, we've got our expected time of 11. So regardless if we're doing a forward pass or backward pass, it's still going to have an expected time or duration, so we can fill in both of those two blocks. It's also going to have an early start. In this case, it's the first task for that project schedule, so it'll have an early start of zero. We can then calculate the early finish for that activity, which is 0 plus 11. So our earliest finish is 11. Now we'll go to the successor task of that task, which is C. In task C, on the early start, we put 11 because that's the earliest time that project activity can actually start. We know from our chart, when we've worked out with our project team, the expected time for C is 9 days. So we can again calculate the early finish for activity C, which is quite simply 20. Now, I've got a problem with activity F because I've got two predecessor tasks going into it. So how do I determine what is the earliest start for activity F? Quite simply, it's the largest of the numbers between its two predecessor activities, which in this case is going to be E with 32. Now I can finish my forward pass through the diagram. 32 and 18, because that's the expected time for task activity F, that's going to give me a total duration of 50. Now finishing on my finishing node, I've got a time of 50 um, days through this particular path and 33 days. So really the earliest time this whole project can be finished is 50 days, which if we look at it again, we can see that A, E, F, will take the longest time through our network, which means these items are on the critical path. Let's go back and calculate the, flat, the slack of the schedule by going backwards through the network. How do we do that? Well, quite simply, the earliest time that we can actually finish the project is in 50 days. So we put a little 50 in the late finish for each of those two nodes at the end. Then, since this is the same here, 50 days early finish, 18 days to finish. So the earliest, sorry, the latest that this project node activity can start is 32 days, the same as it was before going back forward through the project. Going backwards, however, you'll see that since I don't have to actually start uh, activity G for 37 days, because even if I do it at 37 days starting it, it'll take me 13 days to get through it, and I'll be completing it by the 50th day, which is the same time that I'll be completing task F. Therefore, I've just found that there's some slack right here along this path. Let's go back through the diagram going backwards and see where else we can calculate some slack. Now that I've gone backwards through the diagram and calculated all the late finishes and late starts, I can start to look at where my slack is in the schedule. So let's take the top, the top path, the ACG path. We notice that there's a difference between the early start and the late start, and that difference is 17 days. Quite simply, 28 days minus 11 days gives me 17 days. So what that tells me is across this path, I've got 17 days of slack. Again, let's look at this bottom path. Between paths B, D, F, and then finish, I've got six days of slack. Quite simply, it's 13 from 19 days, the early start 
from, excuse me, yeah, the early start from the early finish. And so across this bottom path, I've got sick days of slack. This tells me that if I start my task and I follow along my critical chain, I still have six days to play with through this network path through to the end, and I've got more days, I've got 17 days to play with on that top end. It's important to determine where that slack is so you know where you need to um, put your effort in focusing the team and getting those tasks done, and when you can back off your effort appropriately because you don't need to necessarily push them on that path to the end because you've got 17 days to play with. The activity on the node diagramming method is very, very useful, as I said, in helping you determine the risks through the schedule, refining your time estimates, and most importantly, helping you find that slack, which as we know, time is precious to a project manager. For more project management tips and techniques, come check us out at projectmanager.com.